Welcome to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. If you like what you heard today, please like, share, and subscribe for more content about people-centered HR. On May 23rd, 2022, Raven Software employees won a union election. This union election is really big. Uh, software employees don't typically unionize. They don't typically vote to join a union. It's 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 fairly rare. Um, for one, they can often be distributed across various teams, and for two, generally speaking, their work is comfortable and and doesn't require a lot of unionization. However, this was a group of 28 quality assurance testers for Activision Blizzard subsidiary Raven Software. They won their bid and uh, organized and created a, a union known as the Game Workers Alliance. It's the first of its kind in the video game industry, which is really exciting and, and sort of interesting. Uh, Raven Software makes Call of Duty titles, um, and, and they've mailed in their ballots uh, to vote in the election. Uh, because the company is based in Madison, the Madison, Wisconsin, the Milwaukee office of the National Labor Relations Board are the ones that counted the mail-in ballots because many of the employees are distributed across the United States. Uh, they've the the vote was 19 voting in favor and three against, which means that ultimately a total of 22 people voted in this election, which is an extremely small uh, sample size for 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 matters this large. One tester said that what's even more exciting than what this means for us at Raven is the precedent this sets for the game industry. Quality assurance testers were being underpaid and exploited, and it's the standard, and with unions we can change that. I hope that ours is the first union of many for QA workers, and I'm really looking forward to seeing which studio is next. You know, this this is really a huge problem with respect to these workers. You know, it is they were being abused right there were multiple lawsuits we'll talk about that in a bit um, but they were truly being abused as a result of of their work that said because of the nature of international capitalism and the overall uh, fungibility of these jobs these jobs can easily go to india they can easily go across the world uh, to avoid this unionization and as a result, these employees will likely be laid off. There's there's really nothing keeping uh, these positions inside the United States other than an ease of access. But with the growth of Zoom and 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 these sort of interactive working tools, it's really a system where these jobs can quickly and easily move overseas. Raven Software was really pretty weak in their response to this unionization efforts. They sent a few employee messages to um, to the unionizing employees and held meetings about the upcoming election. Uh, there was a town hall where uh, leadership said it would uh, slow game development and affect their benefits, and then ultimately, and they sent an email that just said please vote no and this is very weak in terms of anti-union efforts uh, i don't know if they weren't prepared to handle uh, these these circumstances or if they just simply didn't care that much because ultimately you know in the context of greater anti-union messages this one is pretty weak one effort that raven software did undertake in their union anti-union efforts was uh, to move the quality assurance uh, group into different segments as a result they did this they, they the intent was to um, break apart the union that they were effectively independent quality assurance people throughout the business 
And so uh, U U.S. Representative uh, Mark Pocan, which is a Democrat out of Wisconsin, met with them. Uh, he said that the, the workers feel that they don't have a union a worker voice. And when they raised the issues and talked about possible unionization, the company tried to break them into different bargaining groups to take away their ability to unionize. Uh, the NLRB did step in to prevent this from happening and allowed them to vote as one, but this is a, a standard anti-union uh, technique that can be fairly effective when companies attempt it. Much of these unionization efforts stem from uh, behavior uh, in the last several years. Uh, there was a lawsuit filed with the Con California Department of Fair Employment and Housing Office. Uh, they filed, uh, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing filed a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard for violations of state civil rights, which included uh, what they called a frat boy culture at Activision Blizzard, um, where it was a quote unquote, breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women. Uh, the harassment included casual discrimination all the way up to sexual assault and harassment. Um, the employees allegedly, the male employees allegedly drank a lot of alcohol and crawled their way through the various cubicles in the office, engaging in inappropriate behavior with female employees. Male employees apparently proudly came into work hungover, played video games for a long uh, period of time, and then delegated their responsibilities to female employees. As a result, uh, many of the female employees brought or uh, filed charges against Activision Blizzard for this behavior. And, you know, this is what really spurred the unionization crisis. Which just goes to show that you know the best anti-union uh, efforts that you can have is to treat employees equitably and consistently and uh, with a with an eye towards inclusion, uh, and there will be less concerns of. You. So, what do you think? Um, you know, this is a groundbreaking. This unionization is groundbreaking in the space of software development and design. It's an interesting uh, conundrum and and more and more I'm seeing white collar uh, employees tend towards unionization for various amount of reasons. You know, a hundred years ago, there were a lot of concerns or a lot of drives towards unionization as a result of few breaks, uh, long hours, low pay, things like that. But more recently, you're seeing unionization among white collar employees go up as a result of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the sort of blue collar workers are, are going down. What may surprise many people is that the only area of education, or sorry, the only area of employees that are going union in terms of education uh, was a uh, was was people with masters so every uh, area of education went down last year in terms of unionization every area went down high school grads went down college grads went down however uh, the portion of uh, employees with master's degrees went up. And so this is an interesting change in the unionization environment. And it's really something that's not talked about a whole lot, but it, it's it's seen that unionization is no longer for the blue collar worker, uh, but, but really reflects a sort of middle to upper class uh, outlook on life and, and, and sort of not your your standard uh, worker complaining of long hours and, and low pay. And so that's an interesting change. There certainly are those unionists that, that are looking for higher pay and they're looking for, uh, you know, better living conditions, but, but they seem to be growing uh, slimmer. 
the concerns more are focused around diversity, sexual harassment, uh, and, and again, in, inclusion. So what do you guys think about this? Uh, you know, leave a comment down below. It's a it's an interesting conundrum and it's an interesting change to the paradigm of, of, of unionization. Um, leave your comments down below. I'd like to hear from you. Thank you. As always, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you around for the next video. Goodbye.